the Chess Olympiad 2014 from Tromsø, Norway. It's going to be a great, great, great Olympiad. They're predicting that 100 million people will watch the games online. 1,500 different competitors, as well as 160 nations. What a great event. I'm told this is the fourth largest sporting event in the world. Don't miss any of the action. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Another game from round four of the 41st Chess Olympiad being played in Tromsø, Norway. As White, the current world champion Magnus Carlsen from Norway, so this is his home turf. And this is a Norway-Poland match, so let's see how badly I can butcher this last name. Wotasik. Wotasik? Reminds me of a joke that I heard. What does a Polish bride receive on her wedding night that's long and hard? And the answer is a new last name. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> excuse me, that was a bad joke. Anyway, it's Nor Norway versus Poland. Carlson's white. Matazic is black. It's going to be a close Sicilian. Go through the first few moves here. Pretty much standard stuff. Got the Fritz computer on off screen. Tiny advantage for black, which is a little surprising. Maybe because it's close to sealing rather than open. You notice on these close to ceilings, though, I notice black has a lot more pieces developed in, in pawns, center pawns, than in an open Sicilian. But yet, yeah, all the top players, including one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player to ever live, Gary Kasparov, loves the Sicilian. So, knight. F4, here we go with a pawn storm on the king side. Calls for castle. Now it calls for bishop to d7, queen to b6, and castle. Black decides to go knight to d4 because I can't keep mispronouncing his name, so I'll just call him black. They both castle. Queen to d2, get the other rook into play. Interesting, interesting. This is a, a point in the game where I, I start to have trouble. Late opening, early middle game. And it's something I struggle with, and that's formulating a plan. What to do, what to do. You've got all your pieces developed. You're castled. Your rooks are going to be in the center of the board soon. What is going to be your plan? Maybe go here at a future date. You can't, though, because these two knights in the pawn are guarding it. Knight here, maybe. Who's to say? Or even knight back over here, for that matter. That after this pawn moves, knight can come up here. I don't know. I really don't. We'll see what happens. Bishop to d7. And knight to d1. Now, the odd part is, I thought of that... And I haven't gone over this game yet, so maybe I'm not so dumb as I thought. <laughs> Queen to c8. Threading to win a piece here, if you notice. He has to move the knight to guard the knight. I never really cared for that much, knight on knight like that. Rex Singfeld, the founder of the Chess Club and Scholastic Center in St. Louis, calls it codependent knights. Knight to c6, c3, b5, f takes, knight takes, bishop h6. Now, I do that quite a bit myself with the queen guarding it, forcing the trade of the dark squared bishop. Knight comes over to c6, bishop takes, king takes. Interesting might have been instead queen to a6, and after bishop takes, king takes, knight to f4. That's... Kind of interesting. King takes, knight to f4. Okay. What to do, what to do. Queen to d8. Just wants to bring his queen over to the king's side of the board. Sorry about the arrow. Rook a to d1. Just centralizing your rooks. Rook to c8. Now this is typical Magnus. And what I mean by this is it's a tiny advantage for white. 
Vegas never gets these overwhelming positions in the opening. He gets to a middle game and just simply outplays everybody. That's what he does. And that's not a criticism. That's actually a, a praise. Queen e2, h5, d4, c takes, c takes, knight to g4. That's a good spot for that knight. You really do want to provoke this pawn. But Magnus does it anyway. Weakens the position a little bit. Not as good would have been queen takes and then knight to e3. That loses the exchange. I don't think it's worth it. Then you've got a discovery here on the knight hitting the queen. After h3, knight takes the pawn. Queen takes knight e7. To knight d7, rook to d3, b4. Now we've got almost an Anakin's gun here. The two rooks and the queen bearing right down. And what the computer suggests is either king to g8 or f6. I really don't care for f6. I guess in a way if you moved pawn to f6, and you move the knight at a later date, the queen helps protect. Decides to go queen to e8 instead, protecting the pawn. Now that went from a half point advantage for white to a point and a half more, point and three quarters. Doesn't seem like much, but to jump that much in one move means it's probably not a good idea. And I'll tell you the truth, it's a perfectly natural move. g4. If Magnus had tried knight to d5 instead, I think knight to g8, queen to d4 check, f6, queen takes, queen to e5. Not a very good scenario for black. It's uh, he's Not only is he down a pawn, but he can't move this pawn. This pawn is in pre. This is tough. H takes, H takes, bishop b5, hitting the rook. Well, at least you get the triple threat off the file. Rook to e1. Queen to d8. I think it's a reasonable move. Extra guard on the d6 pawn. g5. Just tying up the squares around black's king. Here, here, here with a knight. Here with a knight. Here with a knight. Here with a knight. Rook and queen. Very well. Very good. And he goes queen to b6. And the computer's going up and up and up for white. Almost a three-point lead now for Magnus. Almost resignable. Knight to c6 was the computer's choice. After queen to b6, bishop h3, rook c to d8. And the points are just piling up. It says queen to d8 was the last resort to resist the inevitable. Bishop e6. Of course, we see in this scenario that pawn can't take because you lose the queen with check. Bishop d6 anyway. As we just showed, he can't take. Bishop has to go to e8 to guard the pawn again. Like I said, if he took, took, that loses the queen. It's mate in three, by the way. Anyway. Knight to d5, knight takes, bishop takes, oh beautiful with the bishop takes. This is very well played by Magnus. And this is where the black Rodoslaw Javtazek resigns, giving an idea of what would have happened. And this is move 33, so I doubt if it was time pressure. Queen to c7, best move. Rook to h3. And he's doomed. Absolutely doomed. There's nothing he can do to stop the rook. Or excuse me. Rook to g8, probably. Best move. Rook sacrifices himself with check. King can't take. Has to go to f8. 
and then queen h4, and that's the end. Pretty good game for Vagnus. No, he's been having a hard time in this tournament. So this is round four of the 41st Chess Olympiad from Tromsø, Norway. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank all my new subscribers. Thank you very much. And you could also tell your other chess friends here on YouTube about my channel. I'd appreciate it. And as always, folks, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.